Part 2. Under the term invasion, please listen and perceive, quote, the first widespread use of the term Dorian invasion appears to date to the 1830s. A popular alternative was the Dorian migration. Neither of these two words exactly fits the events as they imply an incursion from outside a society to within. But the Dorians were not outside of either Greece or Greek society. Stop. Bingo. Again, if we simply believe the white man, his evidence proves our theories to the letter. In this particular case to me, they admit they know the Greeks didn't come from outside of Greece or Greek society. And to a chosen, that can only mean they are telling us the Dorians are replicated human beings. But let's continue for more clues, shall we? Question. Remember in our Sea Peoples, G-Men, and most recently, our history flipping understanding that the land would be terraformed, as the Egyptian says, like the world has never seen before? I can't hear your answer because this is a video. But if you said you remember, check this little nugget out. Let's continue. Quote, William Mitford's His History of Greece, written in 1784 to 1810, described a Dorian conquest followed by, personal quote, a revolution in the Peloponnese so complete that, except in the rugged province of Arcadia, nothing remained unaltered. Bingo! In 1824, Karl Müller's Die Durier was published in German and was translated into English by Tuffner and Lewis for publication in 1830. They used such terms as, personal quote, the Doric invasion and, personal quote, the invasion of the Dorians, which was quite a different concept. On one level, the the original, I can't say it, it's the original word, meant no more than the return of the Herculeans. Mm. His first paragraph of the introduction asserts, personal quote, the Dorians derived their origin from those districts in which the Grecian nations bordered towards the north upon numerous and dissimilar races of barbarians. As to the tribes which dwelt beyond these borders, we are indeed wholly destitute of information, nor is there the slightest trace of any memorial or tradition that the Greeks originally came from those quarters. Stop! Translation, the Dorians came from a place within the barbarians but no one has any record about what goes on within the barbarians. You know, just like their double secret interior Africa factory. Yeah. In short, he is admitting he has no earthly idea where they came from either. But let's continue. Under K-R-E-T-S-C-H-M-E-R-S. -E -E external Greeks. I'm going to cut to the chase after skipping over a couple of failed attempts to find the original homeland of the Dorians. We will pick it up at the tail end of the last failed attempt. Quote, as late as 1956, J.B. Burry's History of Greece wrote of an personal quote, invasion which brought the Greek language into Greece. Over that half century, Greek and Balkan archaeology united in an effort to locate the Dorians further north than Greece. The idea was combined with a view that the Sea Peoples were part of the same north-south migration about 1200 BC. The weakness in this theory is that it requires both an invading Greece, 
excuse me, it requires it requires both an invaded Greece and an external area. Come on, computer. My God. Come on, computer. Come on. I'm too far gone. Now I'm gonna wait. Come on. Not respond. No, I'm gonna wait till you damn respond. I'm not letting you do this shit today. I ain't up for it. I'm starting over, so I'm sorry, I'm starting over. My computer's just doing what it wants to do. All of a sudden, uh, it's just starting to shit all over again. Okay. I'm starting right here. The weakness in this theory is that it requires both an invaded Greece and external area where Greek evolved and continued to evolve into dialects contemptuously within the invaded Greece. I got said that right. And I'll tell you what it means. Let me say it again. I'll tell you what it means. The weakness in this theory is that it requires both an invaded Greece. Some people, it requires people from the outside to come in. And an exter external area where Greek evolved and continued to evolve into dialects contemporaneously with the invaded Greece. So what it's saying is, if they came from somewhere, there's still supposed to have been some people still out there, still speaking this dialect and evolving just like the Greeks that got here, Greek evolved. But there is nothing out there, you know, outside of Greece that was even remotely like this. So that's why they're saying this, this is a problem. So they know that it didn't come from outside of Greece and come in, you know, or, or unless they brought each and every single, each and every single person, and we know that's not, you know, that's not the case. Uh, we know what's going on. These cats are, are cloned, and this whole thing is going to show you just how, how crazy they they have become, because they don't know, and how much over and over and over again they're going to tell you. We just don't know. And they're going to give us the evidence. That's why, we, why I'm going over this. I want to show you the evidence to show you they don't know. But each and every bit of their evidence pinpoints they was cloned. That's all, that's all it goes back to. These cats was cloned. And it makes perfect sense. Everything you're telling me, okay, these cats were cloned. You know, cloned and a history was overlapped. So that one... Uh, dominant race didn't overlap on the other, so you didn't have true internal fighting where they killed one another, like in the days of Noah. Ah, man, the exact same thing that happened in the days of Noah is we're going to we're talking about right now, and we're going to pick on that a little later on. Man, I know I'm I'm going way off off course. My bad, but let's continue. However, although the invaded Greece was amply represented by evidence of all sorts, there was no evidence at all of the external homeland, just like I was just telling you. Similarly, a clear Greek homeland for the Sea Peoples failed to materialize. Stop. Bingo. Just like I was telling you. Off the cup before I read what I, what I prepared. <laughs> this, just, this is what I was saying. There was telling us, and they just backed it up, you would have a residue of the language if, you know, if an invading army came, let's say the uh, uh, a northern tribe, um, let's, let's just say the North Carolinians came and invaded the Georgians. <laughs> yeah, they would still leave a home base um, you know, a garrison in North Carolina that spoke North Carolinian. But there was none, you know, translate that into the old Greek. There was no North Carolinian uh, residue anywhere. So, no, they didn't come from something nowhere else. They are telling us hands down, all of these Greek nations and their colonies, we're going to get to that, they came from one Warrior source. They were cloned people. We're gonna we're gonna hit them so hard. 
I'm excited. You can see right now, it's just, I know what's later on. And I got to wade through this stuff right here to get to the, to, to the stuff that I'm excited about. But let's continue. Bingo! So as you can clearly see, the world not only have no idea where the master race armada of the Greeks come from, they have no earthly idea how they came into being either. Notice, the Greeks are different and distinct from the other three different and distinct armadas called sea peoples. You know, the ones who were attacked from the land into Syria, the Anatolia, and from the sea from Babylon. We discovered it in our last history series. Please remember though, even though the Egyptians were only attacked by two of the armadas, they named a couple of the same particip participants in both attacks. Why is this important, you ponder? Well, for scholars to, one, call the sea peoples Aegean in origin, two, some of the same attackers were in both attacks, and three, to tell us, quote, similarly, a clear Greek homeland for the Sea Peoples failed to materialize? That can only mean two things, people. First, there is no way in Hades they originated above ground. And second, it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt all Aegeans are programmed replicas with a switch here and a switch hit there. I said program because because, because remember our sea people's understanding? Even though the first wave attack was unsuccessful against the Egyptians, the Egyptians noted the second wave of the sea peoples attacked in the exact same way. I remember back then in the video, I said the second wave failed to adjust because they were programmed to attack in a certain way. I just didn't know how right I was then. But let's continue for more clues, shall we? Under Greek origin in Greece, cutting to the chase after a couple of failed attempts to pinpoint where on earth did the Greek language come from. There is one historian who I believe had half of it right though. What I mean is, remember, the Greek historians already told us the Greek languages were not pure, but instead a mixture of languages created on the island of Crete. And if you go back and read it again, it was said as though the mixture was considered to be an abomination even by Greek standards. He didn't say that it was good. And you could tell when he wrote, when, when he said it. And when I read it, I'm like, okay, he's not in agreement with it. Check out what he finally realized. His vagueness tells the tale also. Quote, Meanwhile, the linguistics closest to the decipherment had, were having doubts about the classification of Pronto Greek. John Chadwick summarized in 1976. He wrote, personal quote, Let us therefore explore the alternative view. This hypothesis is that the Greek language did not exist before the 20th century BC, but was formed in Greece by the mixture of an indigenous population with invaders who spoke another language. What this language was is a difficult question. The exact stage reach is in development at that time of arrival is difficult to predict. Stop. Bingo. Why bingo you ponder? Well, didn't we just, didn't they just tell us if there was any outside contact by the Greeks, their language would have evolved in similar fashions? Which again proves the Greeks don't have an outside beginning because they were cloned creations of the Rodans at the behest of Saur and Nineveh. That's the reason why. Men, they just don't see this. They don't have the spirit to see this. My God has given us the, the cold. I'm just excited, people. My bad. But let's continue for more clues, shall we? 